I'm Jamie. From the Northampton High School Student Union, and welcome to the transcript. This week, the transcript looks into the history of women's protests in the United States, sits down with the Northampton High School Girls Across team, and explores the emphasis placed on STEM education and secondary education. On Wednesday, Britain handed the European Union its letter formally invoking Article 50 of the EU's Lisbon Treaty, beginning the countdown for Britain's exit from the Union. British Prime Minister Theresa May had signed the letter Tuesday night and Britain's ambassador to the EU hand-delivered it Wednesday. May's government will now lead divorce negotiations with the EU, and in March 2019, Britain will leave the EU deal or no deal. The Republican-led House voted Tuesday to roll back landmark internet privacy protections put in place by the Obama administration. In a party-line vote, Republicans removed the limitations imposed last year on what internet service providers such as Verizon, AT&T, and Comcast can do with data on customers' browsing history, app usage, and other personal information. President Trump on Tuesday signed an executive order seeking to undo Obama administration policies that were intended to address climate change. The White House had announced the move in advance, so it came as no surprise. In the sweeping order, Trump told the Environmental Protection Agency to review the Clean Power Plan, which limits greenhouse gas emissions from power plants. He also lifted a ban on new coal leases on federal lands, which Obama put into place for three years in 2016 so the program could be modernized. Hi, I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. Historically, women haven't had it easy when it comes to equality and acquiring certain human rights. In response, women have coordinated and marched in protests that have led to important social change. March is Women's History Month, so this week I am looking at women's protests under a historical lens as context to understanding the current movements in our nation. So what have women's protests accomplished over the course of US history? Let's start with the women's suffrage movement in the early 20th century. 1913 marked the first women's march on Washington, led by Lucy Burns and Alice Paul. Seven years later, women gained the right to vote, in large part because of the efforts of the valiant suffragettes. In 1966, the National Organization for Women, or NOW, was created, which backed some of the biggest women's movements in the 20th and 21st centuries. Continuously since 1923, women's activists and now have been trying to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment, which has been reintroduced in Congress every session since 1982, but never passed. Consecutive marches for women's lives have been the largest civil rights displays in U.S. history. Finally, and most recently, the Women's March on Washington post-President Donald Trump's election broke the records for U.S. protests with three to four million people joining in protests and marches around the country. I got to sit down with Kate Todd Hunter, Kate Fontaine, and a member from the Feminist Collective to discuss their take on women's history. You're, you're talking about more than half the human population. Uh, and so you, if you ignore women's history or if you ignore the role of gender, you are not getting, it's not just half the story, you're just not getting the story. Women's history isn't often taught at the high school level, but certain teachers at NHS try and emphasize it in their classes. You know, the study of, of gender, especially women's experiences, it really has to be woven throughout, you know, the, the whole course. So there's been a movement to teach gender history in, in the classroom. And so Women's History Month is really important because it focuses on the contributions that people that identify as women have made to society. Many people reacted negatively to the new president and his administration and fear women's rights are in jeopardy. Well, there's, there's certainly been progress made. You know, there's been movements for reproductive rights. There's been movements for um, equality in the workplace, for equal pay, for equal work. So those are all important things that are focuses of different women's rights movements. Right now, there's a pretty big focus because we, we have, we've had a change in our political leadership at the national level. And so there is a, a resurgence of a women's movement, which we saw with the women's marches. Reproductive justice is so in threat um, right now. Under the current administration, we talk a lot about the history of access to um, reproductive care and women's health care. In these new political times, women's protests are increasing in prevalence and size. It will be interesting to see if these modern large-scale protests will have the same large-scale impact as seen in previous women's movements. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? This week, I talked to NHS junior Abby Baldwin and NHS senior Yin Yin Doherty Weinrob about the upcoming Girls Across season. 
Uh, so last season, you guys made it to the Western Mass quarterfinals, and you ended up losing in overtime. So when you come into this season, do you ever use last year as motivation, or do you come in just focusing mostly on this year? We lost to Agawam in the quarterfinals, and we lost them three times, actually. So it'd be nice this year to come back and maybe beat them. And they're kind of our rival now since we lost them three times, and it was close every time. So this season, what do you think the team has to do to make a deeper run in the playoffs? I think um, we just need to work on our team dynamic and know how to play with each other. It's a very new team. A lot of seniors graduated, and um, we had a lot of spots to fill. We just need to work with each other and learn how one another play. But we really need to work on getting the whole offense involved and also just tightening up the defense because um, we did lose a lot of seniors. Uh, so what are some of the other teams that you feel you need to watch out for this year? Um, I would say Agawam because we lost to them and they've always been kind of a rival and um, East Long Meadow there was a game last year when it was just everyone on the team was so frustrated um, with our loss we beat them once and then they beat us the second time um, and then Minichug and Long Meadow who are usually are always really good teams. Next year you're gonna go play lacrosse at Bard College so what did you like about their program? Um, well when I went to Bard I did an overnight because um, I wanted to get a better feel of the school um, and there the athletic um, community is really tight and seemed really strong and I really love the coach and th the players and yeah, it seemed like a good fit. <laughs> Great, thank you so much for being on Hamped Up. Highlight videos from both the boys and girls basketball seasons are now up on the NHS Tech YouTube channel. Also, if anybody is interested in doing sports for the transcript next year, please come see me in Jeremy's room. Many people feel that there is a certain emphasis on STEM in education. I want to figure out what our own teachers at NHS think of the emphasis which has been placed by the education system and society on these subjects. In order to cover all of my bases, I talked to Dylan Boyd, a math teacher, Ryan Parent, a history teacher, and Heather Brown, an English teacher, in order to hear what they all had to say. STEM is the new key educational term and it's the idea that you focus on you know, science, technology, um, engineering, math. I think I appreciate the, the emphasis on it because we need people to go into those fields maybe more than they have been. Um, I also particularly like the idea of engaging females in those careers because in past decades they've been directed to other places. So I'm appreciating that about the emphasis as well. I have seen a lot of students taking doubled up math classes, freshman year, sophomore year, and they run into a common problem, which is they run out of options. They take in, you know, I am one, I am two, I am three, pre-calculus, then what? Okay, now you're gonna take calculus, but maybe you don't wanna double up anymore, so now you're gonna take statistics, take personal finance, take topics, you start to run out of options. And you're still getting pressure to take math classes every year. I think maybe sometimes they de-emphasize the importance of their homework in an English class and they might feel like, oh, I have math problems, you know, that are concrete that I have to write out or science problems that I have to do. Um, but I feel like in class they're pretty engaged in the topics because they're about humans and we're all humans. And so they, um, you know, they dig into those issues pretty well in class discussions, but the written part maybe a little less emphasis recently, I would say. I don't think there was enough emphasis put on it maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and I think uh, there was really uh, a movement away from that. I think now, um, as is the case often with education, we've gone so far overboard that we've hindered um, things like social studies. If your interests and talents are in something else, do you need to take a lot of math classes? Less so. In a broader sense, math is important. Studying it is important. Coming out of school taking six math classes, not so important. And I don't think it's going to cause people to lose interest in the humanities. I have faith in the humanities. Thanks for watching. Also, if you have any segment ideas that you want me to cover, come and talk to me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the Student Union's Facebook page, Student Union of NHS, and stay updated for more information on meetings and issues we're tackling. Currently, we're gathering opinions about the cost of AP testing. 
feel free to talk to either one of us for more information about the Student Union. And check the Student Union Bulletin Board outside of the front office to see a list of your class's Student Union representatives.